And joining me to, this, to have a talk about it now is former Liberal Senator Erica Betts. Eric, welcome to Bernard. It's great to have you on the show. Now, when you hear these stories from Canada, what do you reflect on and what does it mean for here, here in Australia? It's a terrible reflection on the regime in Canada. It's also a terrible reflection on those that made the decisions because what it does, it debases human life. And uh, as that bureaucratic letter suggested to the person, um, things aren't good, we don't want to deliver a service, well, we can deliver a service to you, and that is the needle. Now, that is not a way that a humane society deals with its citizens. Um, you know, for anybody to be able to say to a fellow human being, yeah, we agree with you, your life is not worth living, is something that I just find abhorrent. I can understand that there are people in desperate situations who do commit suicide or who want to commit suicide. That's one issue. But for another person to say, yeah, we agree with you, your life's no longer of any value, uh, is something I personally find abhorrent. And if you extrapolate that into what it might mean for society in the future, you start seeing or see the alarms going off, or you should do. And of course, why? Because what we've seen in Canada uh, this past week, 3.3% of the deaths courtesy of so-called euthanasia, it is state-sanctioned suicide. And what a terrible display for the world to see. And then, of course, what does the white Prime Minister of Canada say? Oh, yeah, terrible, terrible. Uh, we'll make sure that uh, you know, this is uh, condemned. But in condemning it, did he actually do anything to stop the bureaucracy? And what was the mind in the bureaucracy that allowed such a letter to be thought of, let alone drafted, and most importantly, sent out. How did that actually occur? And, and that is something that we as a community in Australia, I think, can now learn a lesson from, from our cousins in Canada. We should not be allowing this to happen here in Australia. Well, you're right there. I don't think we should be allowing it to happen. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's legislated in so many states, um, uh, euthanasia, and many of them kick off next year. But, you know, that what's done is done, I suppose, and we've got to find ways of redressing any encroachment on it. But unfortunately, we've failed at this right around the world, Conservatives, where the debasement of human life has, has crept in. We've got places in Belgium where Nurses are, are producing or doing voluntary euthanasia without even the consent of the patients. But all of these things were denied. Now we've got the, the Canadian case hiding in plain sight. They want to legislate that children or mature minors, as they call them, can opt out of life because of insufferable conditions and they don't even have to discuss it with the parents, just with a medical practitioner. That is an appalling, appalling precedent, isn't it? It's a shocking precedent, one for the child, but also for parental rights and families. Um, these sorts of things should be discussed within families and the familial support uh, should be paramount in these things. A doctor that might see somebody once, twice, even a dozen times won't have as good an understanding as a mum and dad who have been with a child all its life. Uh, but to say that a mature-minded uh, minor, well, the fact they're under 18, unable to vote, surely suggests that there are issues uh, that they are not deemed to be uh, fully capable of deciding for themselves. And what's the most important consideration? I would have thought it's life and death. Uh, <laughs> and so... How, yeah. how this is allowed I, I agree. To I agree with you, Eric. Defies, yeah, yeah, just defies well, you, any you have to uh, think comprehension. About, yeah, you have to think about some of the other things that are going on in our society, though, Eric. I mean, we're now allowing, and, and internationally, they're allowing children to make decisions about whether they want to be boys or girls and undergo um, uh, life-changing surgeries and puberty blockers. Uh, what's the difference allowing them to say, I don't want to be part of this world anymore because, you know, I've got a, a mental illness or I'm depressed or I just feel I don't like it anymore. We've always stopped those things because 
we think that young people aren't ready to make those sorts of irreversible decisions. Uh, and yet society's debased it, as you say, about humanity and now saying, well, personal freedom is everything. But that comes at a, a huge cost, doesn't it, in these cases? And look, uh, personal freedom is one thing, but getting people who are either mentally ill or not sufficiently developed, namely minors, are not able to make those sort of decisions for themselves. And as we are now seeing in the United Kingdom uh, with the Tavistock matter, young people who were talked into having um, gender reassignment surgery, puberty blockers, etc., having their bodies damaged irreparably and now suing Tavistock for um, the mistreatment of them. And in fact, Tavistock, as I understand it, is now being closed down as a result of it with a whole host of pending lawsuits. So this is not an issue of just a person being allowed to make a decision. These are irreversible decisions, uh, damage to body, which can not be repaired. And of course, the worst example of that is euthanasia, where once dead, we cannot bring them back to life. And yeah, yeah. I in fact conducted the Senate Eric. hearing into, yep. Yeah, yeah I, I, I know you I, were one of the people that pushed very hard ag against, against uh, euthanasia right around the country. You spoke about the, the values and about the slippery slope argument. I agree with you 100% on it. But where are the voices? How did the right fail so badly in pushing back against this? We had Liberal governments, for goodness sake, um, endorsing it and saying, yeah, let's pick it up and, and go with it, where Labor was even too scared to tread. So what's happened to the voices on the right? Too many of the voices that get into Parliament on the conservative or right side of politics then uh, go woke or go down paths which they think are trendy, or more popular rather than sticking with the principles on uh, which they were endorsed and on which they were elected. But coming back to euthanasia, I still remember uh, one person telling me that uh, their brother had wanted to be euthanized and the, f the brother said to him, no, I just simply cannot do it. I simply cannot do it. A week later, that suffering brother said, thank goodness you didn't. I finally made peace with mum and dad. And this last week of my life has been the most valuable week I have lived. And so you know, if euthanasia, mm. it is irreversible. And some really high quality opportunities and times will be denied people, both the patient and those around him or her. So it's one of those things where we have to tread exceptionally carefully and the value of human life is what protects you and me and everybody else. And a caring society will put their arm around somebody rather than saying, oh, we can't get you a wheelchair. All right, here's an alternative. Uh, try suicide. Just appalling stuff. And if we treat each other like that, think about each other like that, I see that this is a very, very slippery slope that many of us warned about, Corey, and uh, were ridiculed, and here we are now seeing it in real life. But, of course, those that ridiculed never stop to apologise or say, oops, I think these fellas might have been right. They just keep on and say, oh, yeah, let, let's, let's expand euthanasia. It's so successful, 3.3% of Canadians have accessed it, they'll undoubtedly say, look, it's that good, it's that popular, let's hope it gets up to 5% or 6%. It's very popular. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Eric, it's lovely to talk to you again. Um, Merry Christmas to you We've, uh, in the lead up to it. I know it's a very special season for you and for your family. So uh, God bless and thanks for joining me on Bernardi.